I wanted to say hello to you on this beautiful day. This video is getting posted in March around the time of the anniversary of when I accidentally jumped off a cliff and fell about 45 feet and got paralyzed. And I mean, the whole, I didn't mean to jump off the cliff. If you don't know who I am and you stumbled on this video and you're like, who is this weird lady? <laughs> no, like it was an accident. I thought there was a boulder there. I'm sure you can just find a different video and get the full story or, you know, whatever. But it was an accident. I accidentally jumped off this cliff, fell a really long ways and- She does answer it in another video. You can, you can go find another one. Yes. You should link to it. We answered, we will link in the, in the description. There's a link, so subscribe. Watch this other video, why she jumped off a cliff. There you go. Quite all your questions answered. <laughs> it's not that, it's not terribly, terribly complicated. I just didn't know. So but we're celebrating 19, 19 years. 19 years. 19 years. <laughs> 19 years of being in a wheelchair. You know, not very many people get to see this side of walking. I have got to see this side of walking for 19 years. I was paralyzed when I was 22 and I've been in a wheelchair for 19. So, you know, it's, Fairly equal, fairly equal. Maybe on the 22nd year that I've been in a wheelchair, then we'll have to do something amazing. But next year will be 20 years, which is kind of cool. 20 full years, two decades of being in a wheelchair. We're gonna do something amazing. You let us know what it is. We did something bigger on the 10 year, right? Yeah, on the 10th anniversary, we held a conference, our very first conference, which actually turned into a huge business that has like an app now and everything. <laughs> But we had this conference with some other motivational speakers and it was it was a huge success because everyone knows, you know, even if you're not disabled, everyone knows what it feels like when this life gets too hard to stand and everyone knows what it feels like to not feel good enough emotionally to be able to put one foot in front of the other. And so I feel like everybody, everybody can get a little pick me up when they need it. From, from motivational, you know, things like that. Anyway, so that's why the conference was a huge success and it's still ongoing and here we are today. Yeah. Nine years after we put on that conference, one year away from the 20th anniversary, what should we do? Yeah. Us. Let us know what we should do on 20 years. Something, something big. Huge. Crazy. Who knows? 20-ish style. I've been able to learn so many things in the 19 years that I've been in a wheelchair and I, pretty much everything I do in a wheelchair, I at one time thought I was never gonna be able to do that. Oh my goodness, I was there. I remember my physical therapist came into the hospital um, when I was in the rehabilitation unit and he was like, today we're going to turn on the light switch and I cried. I cried. I was laying on my hospital bed and I was like, I'll never be able to do a light switch. This is no more. Like, I thought it was just gonna be, it was just crazy, crazy that I could turn on a light switch. Just crazy. The idea of using my paralyzed hands and flipping on a light switch was nuts that I cried. And my physical therapist, my other physical therapist, so that was actually my occupational therapist who said that. My physical therapist was trying to motivate me on a different day. You know, for being a motivational speaker, I was like pretty grumpy pants, like in the hospital. Sometimes people will reach out to me and they're like, oh, please come and visit my son, visit my niece, visit my friend. They've just been paralyzed and they think I can turn them into some kind of happy wheelchair person, you know? Yeah, so if you know somebody in a wheelchair, just they have to be ready. They have to be ready Having to talk to somebody I think a family member or somebody bring someone in and introduce them isn't gonna do it. They it have to be ready to. I've been, I've been that somebody that like gets introduced and it doesn't work, <laughs> it doesn't work. It only works if that person wants to see someone else, you know, to, to be inspired. You can only be inspired as much as you are able. So if you are looking for inspiration, you're going to find it. Like you're going to be successful in that pursuit. And if you're not looking for inspiration, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's in front of you because you are the one who decides to let it in or block it, you, that you, you choose that. And so I was not ready to be in a wheelchair. You know, and who is really? Oh, you can walk? <laughs> not anymore. No, I was not ready. I was not ready to be in a wheelchair. And I was in the hospital for about, I don't know, three-ish months before I went to the rehabilitation unit. And I was there for like another month. So in all in all, I was in the hospital for four months. And in the rehabilitation unit, it was so hard to, be there and to practice things like getting on the mat, not the bed, not the couch, not the car, but getting onto the exercise mat that's like stiff and you know, it's firm and it's easy to transfer to and stuff. And it was so hard. 
for me and so hard if you're brand new. And I remember being just really discouraged and my physical therapist, her name's Misty, and she was saying like, oh Meg, you can do it. Like wheelchair, people in wheelchairs, like they're amazing. They can do so many things. Like you just have to learn how to do it and then you'll be able to do it and you're gonna be just fine. And she was telling me about her friend who's a paraplegic in a wheelchair, which paraplegic means they can, you know, like use their hands and you know, things like that. So even though he was a para and I'm a quadriplegic, she was saying that we were really similar levels of injury. And she was saying, she's like, oh, you know, we went out to lunch just the other day and he opened my car door for me. Like, and I got in and then he shut the door and then he wheeled himself around the car, opened up his door, got himself in, got his wheelchair in. And I was there in the hospital listening to her tell the story and I was like, no. No way, no way did this, I was like, there's, there's no, and there's no way. There's no way I'm ever gonna be able to do that. There's no way I thought that I would never open up somebody else's car door, let alone my own, and drive and get into the car by myself. Was she crazy? Like, I just thought none of that would happen. And then like, a few years later, you know, we're talking 365 times three, like, a few years later of, Lots of tears, probably 365 times three. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of Bon Jovi. It's my life. I would turn that on when I would practice things, you know, like car transfers and bed transfers and stuff. Actually, just bed transfers now that I think about it. After a long time of practicing, I showed up and I took Misty on a drive. And we, and I got her door and got in my car and then I wept. <laughs> you it was emotional you know you just don't know sometimes when opportunity knocks and you answer the door it looks like the grim reaper and the end of your life as you know it and you don't want to let him in but you already opened the door and whatever whatever just happened changed your life so much in such an unwelcome uninvited unhappy way that you really only have two choices you could just lay down and give up or you can pick yourself back up the best way you can and keep on rolling and just doing what you gotta do to make it happen and be happy. And I chose the latter. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to walk and I would love to dance and I would love to, you know, do lots of things just standing up, be able to reach the top of, you know, the top cupboards in my kitchen. That would be amazing. But, you know, my life is a little shorter now. I'm not as in like length. <laughs> <laughs> like actual height. You're short. You're shorter. I'm little bitty. <laughs> Went from five six to three eight. I am no. I, I'm like a. Am I three I don't eight? Know. <laughs> I don't know. We, we should, should measure. measure. Where's the measuring stick? I know. I think we had one the other night. You know. My six year old's getting. I know. My six year old's here, and my little baby can push me off the bed. So. <laughs> You know, this is just my life now, and it's a happy life. I can't walk and I can't dance any, you know, at least not like I used to. But man, man, it can be a happy life if you if you let it. Depends on if you're gonna block that inspiration or just let it, let it in. So today, on the 19th anniversary of me being paralyzed, me jumping off a cliff. Usually we uh, we call it Cliff Day. March 6 is Cliff Day. Uh, usually we just jump off stuff and eat Cliff Bars. But, we're gonna do that tomorrow. Yeah, we still will. Yeah, we still we're still gonna do that. But um, but I wanted to put out a cool video. Maybe brag. Can I brag? Can I brag to you? Can I brag a little bit about what I can do? What I have learned to do? All I I came up with a list of 19 things that I can do in a wheelchair that I never thought I would be able to do. I never thought I would be able to do these 19 things. I would cry at the idea that, oh my gosh, would I ever turn on a light switch? Would I ever be able to get in the car? Would I ever, would I ever, would I ever? And yes, I ever, I do. I have these things, I can do these things. So I wanna share this list with you and show you what I can do. 19 things, ready? 19 things. These are only a few things that she can do. These are 19. I can do a lot yes, more. I can do many more things in this. And these are in no particular order. These are just 19 things. They're not in like order of difficulty. In fact, lots of people ask me like, what's the hardest thing you've ever learned how to do? And there's no answer. All 19. Yeah, all 19. Cause like, you know, picking my nose wasn't harder to learn uh, than snowboarding was when I could walk, you know? So it's like, <laughs> everything's hard the first time you do it. So anyway, here we go, 19 things. Putting on lip gloss. Ooh. Aren't they pretty?
Second one, flipping on a light switch. Comments from the peanut gallery? No. <laughs> okay, Let's we'll see this thing. Should we do, do you wanna see do it? Do you wanna turn it off too? Yes. On and off. Okay, number three. Uh, I can sit up all by myself. Sit all up. by myself. You know no what? No ab muscles either. No abdominal muscles, and I totally can sit up all by myself. It's a big deal. It's a big deal to be able to do that. You know, I really felt so happy when I could do that. Number four, turn on the stove burner. What? Without burning anything down. Not yet. Anyway. Not in 19 years. Not, not in 19 full years. Turn that stove burner on. I could write. I have beautiful handwriting. Actually, sometimes you can't really read it, but that doesn't matter because it looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I can kiss boys. Want to see? B roll. B roll. B roll. I never thought I'd be able to. Let me are you it. kissing other boys? <laughs> what boys are you kissing? <laughs> I was single when I was paralyzed. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I had a boyfriend, but you know, we broke up after. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna get married. I'm never gonna have boys to kiss. <laughs> I can definitely kiss. My, I mean, there's nothing, I'm not paralyzed. My lips aren't paralyzed. That was more of like an emotional thing. Told you this video was emotional. Oh my gosh, I just thought I would never date or get married. All right. What are we at? Hold a baby. Seven. I thought I'd never hold a baby, let alone my own. I thought I'd never have a baby. Three babies you've had. I, I can hold three babies, probably not at a time. <laughs> I wouldn't I dare you try. I three babies, I not did. hold three babies. <laughs> I would need to have three babies oh, too. I see. <laughs> both of that is, both <laughs> things are true. Hold a baby, open a milk jug. So just imagine you suddenly can't use your hands, but you really want to drink a milk. <laughs> That's a bad day. Like <laughs> you're gonna cry. You oh my goodness! Get it out of the fridge. It's so heavy. <laughs> oh my gosh, milk's so heavy. So I can do it though. I can open a milk jug. Number nine. Get onto the couch. What? Watch a movie. Uh, get onto the bed. It's my life, it's now or never. I ain't gonna live forever. I would turn that song on and get on and off my bed. <laughs> choo, 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 choo. Oh, that's the whole point. I mean, not by yourself. Well, yeah. And a cushion uh, that won't go flat on you, you know? Ta da! Cut an apple? That's number 10. No, yep. that's 11. Was that 11? Did I skip cut one? An apple. Oh, no. number 11. Cut an apple. I have. I just didn't think I was going to be able to cut an apple or anything. I didn't think I'd be able to use a knife or cook in my kitchen. I totally cook in my kitchen. Number 12, fold laundry. Something that I missed very much when I got paralyzed and came home initially from the hospital was being able to do chores, to just being able to work, wash dishes, do my own laundry, things like that. I really missed that quite a bit. So being able to do my own laundry and fold it, what? Amazing. Open a door. Pretty much any door, I can open it. I'm not like, you know, safe cracker. <laughs> it's like, we're talking, this is like this is residential. A, this is an unlocked door. <laughs> open an, an unlocked door. <laughs> you know, we have our limits. <laughs> I don't think I've ever used a key on our house. <laughs> I don't even think I have a key. <laughs> if my house is locked, I'd be like, well, I guess I have to move. Oh, I can put on my own shoes. My own shoes. 
I don't have to ask somebody to put my shoes on if I don't want to. I mean, I still do sometimes, but you know. Get it for the footies. Get it for the footies. I can put on my own shoes. I can brush my own teeth. Ding. There was a time. I could always kind of brush my teeth, but it was so hard. The, just doing it was so difficult that like I would get so weak and kind of like feeble and pass out a little bit. So anyway, that was super hard, um, but I can do it. I just kept trying and kept trying. And one time my boyfriend was there and I was like, brush my teeth for me. And he's like, you know, anything you can do for yourself helps everybody. And that kind of just stayed with me. Like, yeah, you know, I really should try and do what I can for myself. I can't do everything, but I can do something, and I can brush my teeth, and I just kept brushing my teeth from then on. 16. Put on my own gloves. All by myself, nobody has to help me. What? Women's weightlifting gloves, you can give me some for my birthday if you want. These are a little rat-a-tat. I can blow up a balloon. That's a new thing, too. Be impressed. I think that's this year. Yeah, this year I have been able to blow yeah, up a balloon. 19th balloon. year. No, I blew one up backstage at Lehigh when we did something. So it's been within the past like two years or something, three years, maybe four, I don't remember. But it's it's not like I've been able to do it the whole 19 years. You know, the, these have come gradually. And blowing up a balloon is new. I'm proud of me. What? I can play the piano. I mean, not well. I didn't play the piano before. But man, can I play this song. Number 19, last one. This is a big one. This is something that for a few months, I really legit thought I was never gonna be able to do it again. Watch, I'm gonna do it right here, no B-roll. I can totally breathe, all by myself. I, I, you guys can see the trach scar on my neck. But I was ventilated. I was on a ventilator. I was intubated for a very long time. And I thought that's, I mean, that's what they told my family is that I was going to be like that the whole time. And I would practice and I would pray and I would ask other people to pray and um, practice, meaning I would like sit up in a chair instead of laying in my hospital bed. And man, I had to, you know, that was, that was a hard time. That was a very hard time to be on a ventilator for that long. And so I am truly grateful that I can breathe and do the other 18 things on there, plus so much more. Those are 19 things that you cannot do. They're pretty awesome. Not to brag, yes to brag. This is totally a bragging <laughs> video. Thank you so much for liking this video. So and yeah, all the things so 19 years paralyzed, next year is gonna be 20 years. We Let gotta come know. up with something big. Yeah. What should, should we rent out a cruise ship? Yeah. If you guys wanna come on a come cruise? Come on a cruise with us. Should we all That's go on a idea. cruise? 20 year anniversary cruise? Yes. We should do that anyway. Put in the comments. <laughs> yes, let's go cruising. For us. 
So yes, and I gonna celebrate big. Jump off stuff and eat some cliff bars. So this has been a crazy 19 years. I mean, I I have loved what I have learned on this side of walking and I've loved the feeling of accomplishment from accomplishing so much on this side of walking. And yeah, I would really love to walk. That would be amazing. That would be so cool. And who knows what the next 19 years are gonna bring. I have faith in the medical community. Oh my goodness, look me up if you would like a test trial. Um, if you would like a test trial to be done. But it's okay, because there's more things to learn and there's more things to do and there's more things to be. And you know, we told you this is gonna be an emotional video and I hope that you have felt some really strong emotions like satisfaction and joy and happiness because that's what I feel. That's what I feel and that's what I continue to feel. And there's up days and down days and sad days and happy days, you know, but when you're thinking back, like it's really hard when you are going through something very awful. When the opportunity knocks and it's that grim reaper and your life as you know it is over and you're walking through that really awful trial and struggle and hardship, it's really awful. But on the other side of awful, 19 years later, you can look back and be like, yeah, I did that. I so did that. Like I accomplished that and I walked through a really awful path full of broken glass and I was barefoot and maybe I couldn't even walk, I had to crawl through it, you know, I don't know. You can describe your trial path however you want to, but on the other side of awful, when you can look back and think of all of the things you've accomplished and done, it feels good. So thanks for letting me feel good on this video with you guys and I would hope to encourage you, no matter what, no matter what trial you're going through, no matter what hardship is going on right now that you're currently in the middle of, uh, to keep on rolling because that's just what you gotta do until you're on the other side of awful and you can look on back and say, yeah, I did that and I'm awesome, because you are. So remember, when your life gets too hard to stand, just keep on rolling.